When you're down and out, things just don't work out, and it seems that your life is sad and easy. Do these people take and kill these little babies? And why do they abort these little babies? Why do they do all that, Brother Beckley? Because their works are of the devil. You could say whatever you will, please. I believe what God's Word said. And God's Word said that Cain's works were of the devil. And his brothers was right. If you believe, trust in, and hear to, and rely on God's Word, you're not going to get out here and do that kind of thing. And you're not going to support those that do them. If you do, then you are F-O-O-L. That's simple. All you're doing is spinning your wheels, and you'll never, ever, ever get in right, right relationship with God. Oh, Brother Beckley, now, now you're getting a little bit hard on me now. I intend to be hard on people. I intend for to, to, to tell the truth about it. If you're not with God, you're against Him. All right, now, let's go back. We're going to look at Malachi 3. Uh, we're going to maybe touch a little bit of tithing now. What's right in the eyes of God when you come and... Uh, uh, resupply his storehouse. I'm talking about storehouse in the congregation now, in your church. First of all, you got to have funds to run a church, a congregation. You've got to have. You got to have a water bill, phone bill, light bill, uh, heat, and all the things that go into a building. You've got to have those things. Now, if you want to read, meet in each other's house, that is fine, that is dandy, and that is good. But if you've got a congregation to support, God tells you how to do it. And he intends for us to do just that. You can say anything you want to say about Oh, Brother Baker, tithing was for them back then. You can say whatever you want to say about that, but I'm going to show you without any doubt that you're wrong. Tithing sh should be done today for the upkeep of the ministry, for the upkeep of the poor in your area, wherever you touch them. You've got to have funds to take care of those kind of things. And if you don't have, you're not going to be much use to God. And the only way it's going to be put in there, God is not going to float $20 bills down out of the sky and go into your storehouse in your congregation or in your church treasury. It's not going to do it. Now, I'm going to get hard about this. Because I believe it with all of my heart. I never had a thing until I got on this message and learned how to tithe. Now remember that tithe is what you put into the coffers of your church and your congregation. It's what that tithe is for. And remember, an offering is what you give to the man on the street or, or help somebody else along the way. That's an offering. We take up special offerings, not tithes. I brought the bank, I took part of my tithe and I carried over and did this and I took the other part and I came over and did it. No, no, no. God said bring the firstlings, the firstlings to him. Malachi 3.10 Do you believe God? Do you believe God? Ask yourself this question. Do you really believe God? Or do you just believe in God? 
Do you believe God? Well, this message is for you. And Brother Big, I'm on a fixed income. Well, let's unfix it, okay? Let's unfix it. If you draw $100 a month, I don't care if even food stamps, that's not free money. Even if it's from welfare, you owe God a tithe even of that. Now, he will not accept a tithe where you beat somebody on a car deal and then bring it in. Now, that's, that's just like throwing it out the window. God's not going to accept that, that kind of money where you stole it from somebody else. He don't want you to give it to him when you stole it from somebody else. No. Malachi 3, beginning at verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes. <laughs> what is a tithe? A tithe is 10%. Make no mistake about it. 10%. Bring all your 10% into the storehouse. What is the storehouse? It's the place where you are attending church. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. Meat, M-E-A-T. Well, it means substance. That there might be something there to help somebody. And that there might be some food or whatever you brought. Back when this was written, of course, they didn't have money uh, like they got today. So they brought a little bit of everything in there. They brought cows and, and, and all kinds of stuff in there and as the firstlings of the flock. They bring them in there and, and it was put in a storehouse. Bring ye all the tithes. Bring that 10% into the storehouse. Now today, of course, we got money to do it with. That there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord. Make me prove what I'm about to tell you. That's what he's saying. Bring all the tithes in the storehouse that there might be meat in my house and prove me herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough <laughs> to receive it. You won't be able to even hold all of what God's got in store for you. If you'll only bring that little tithe to him. And he says, make me prove it. Make me prove it. The world says, oh, wait a minute, no. Uh, 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 you got to have gas money next week. Make me prove it. Oh, hey, you're not going to have enough money to, to buy your, that new television you want. Make me prove it, God said. See if there won't be room enough in your house to receive what God's got in store for you. God said, make me prove it. The world talks to you another way, but God said, do it this way. Bring all the tithes, all the tithes, every single solitary tithe into my house that there might be room in my storeroom. And make me prove if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough for you to receive it. If every Christian today would tithe, 
there would not be a single evangelist on television begging for money. Not one. Not one. They would all be supplied by congregations. They would never have to ask you for a quarter. They wouldn't stop having to uh, sell these little books and uh, these little pamphlets and some of me selling prayer cloths and all this other kind of bull. That's not what God wants. God wants you to bring the tithe into his storehouse and make him prove that he will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough for you to receive it. The world will do it another way. They lie, steal, and cheat it. It's the only way the world... Now, now look, let Brother Beckley explain to you what... When you hear me say the word world, I mean everybody outside the body of Christ. Now, there's a lot of honest, clean people that don't know Jesus. Don't get me wrong there. But when I speak of the world, I speak of people outside of the body of Christ. That's the world. But anyone inside of the body of Christ is the body of Christ or the church. Okay? And people are going to get on you, going to jump on you for doing this kind of thing. Now, I don't mean if you are heavily in debt. Somehow or another, you've got your way into that mess. And now you got to get your way out. I don't mean that you're supposed to owe this man over here and you take away from that man and give it to God. I don't care what you give. You start off with whatever you can. Once after you've learned this, you start off with whatever you can. Then you begin to build on that. God's going to honor it when you honor your commitment you made to someone else. And look at verse 13. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. This world hated Jesus, and it will hate you or hate everyone that tries to do it right. They're going to try to do it right. This world is going to be down on you like an ugly on a monkey. They're going to be all over you. Oh, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do You don't have to do that. You don't have to give that tithe. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. That's what the world's going to say to you. This world system will always get you to do the wrong thing. My daddy told me years ago, son, you can't borrow your way out of debt. God, I wish he was here. He's been in the something into oblivion. The world will always get you to do the wrong thing. Don't tithe. You won't have enough for your fun. You won't have have enough to buy those bowl tickets. No matter how you cut it, God wants the part that is reserved for Him, and that tithe belongs. To him, it is not yours. He wants it brought into the storehouse, which is the congregation which you belong to. Not television preachers, unless that's where you're getting all your, your teaching. If that's your church, and yes, yeah, send it to, to the TV preacher. But that tithe belongs in the congregation which you belong to the one that you're part of, to be used in that storehouse for good. Malachi 3.10 again, bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse, and there that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, 
saith the Lord. If I will not open you the wonders of heaven and pour you out a blessing, pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Do you believe God? <laughs> do we really believe God? If we did, we'd do that right there. Little churches, and it's hard to survive, I don't care. You got a church full of old folks that own a little bit of a little bit of funds and they don't have much to live on. You got the church full of those folks. My belief is now, no matter how badly you want to hold on to that little church building, no matter how badly your mama belonged to it, your daddy belonged to it, your grandma belonged to it, but now it's down to a few folks. No matter how badly you want to keep that that way, you can't. You can't do it. Unless you bring all the tithes, 10% of every single solitary thing you have, every dime you get your hands on, if you bring that into the storehouse, and God said, I'll prove it to you. I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There won't be room enough for you to receive it. How much of the tithe do we need to bring to God? All the tithes. Not part of it. All the tithes. It's not yours. It belongs to God. He laid that tithe or that tent aside for himself to make sure that his congregations were taken care of. Like I said, I don't care if you got three people in the congregation and you really want to hold on to it. You like this preacher. He's a, he's a good preacher. He preached a good message. If you really want to hold on to it, bring all the tithes in and let God bless you on what you bring in. I don't care if it's $3. He said, prove me therewith. Whatever you take up on Sunday, if it's done from the heart, now you're not supposed to be giving out of restraint. Or because you think you have to. You don't need to be given like that. He said he loves a cheerful giver. When you give, you, you're not really giving, but when you, when they pass the plate, you cheerfully drop that tithe in there. Leviticus 27, excuse me, Leviticus 27.30. I told you that all the tithe belongs to God. Leviticus 27. It don't belong to you. It belongs to God. And all the tithes of the Lord, excuse me, and all the tithes of the land, whether the seed of the land or the fruit of the trees is the Lord's and it is holy unto the Lord. All the tithes, 10%, the tithe belongs to God of the land, even of the seed in the land. A tithe belongs to him. Of course, it's all God's, but he's given that to us. He's allowed us to be good stewards of it. He's allowed meager man to run this earth and roar. In some cases, they're making a mess out of it. 
If God's the one running everything, if God's the one that's ruling and reigning over everything, he's making a mess out of it. Oh, Brother Pink, you shouldn't say that. Yeah, I'm going to say that. You can't blame this stuff on God. You can't blame this uh, aborting these little babies on God. Who do you think you are? It's not God doing that. If God's in control, if God chooses to be in control of that, which he, he does not, not right now, he is making a mess out of it. God can do anything he wants to. Yes, he can, except break his word. And he said he put man in control of his own destiny. He gave you a free will. You don't have to tithe. You don't have to. Paul said, I can do whatever I want to do, but everything's not profitable to me. I can do everything I want to do, but everything's not profitable. Leviticus 27 again, verse 30, and all the tithe, all the 10%, of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. That tithe belongs to the Lord. It is holy unto the Lord. It's not only just He is, it's holy. He, he has His arms around that. Malachi 3.8 What are you doing when you don't bring his tithe in? What are you doing to him? What are you doing to the gospel of Jesus Christ? What, what's going on in your life? What are you really doing when you don't bring that tithe into the storehouse? What are you really doing? Let's look at it. Malachi 3, 8. Will a man rob God? Oh, Lord, no. Ooh, what are you talking about, rob God? No, I, I never would rob God. That, that's silly, Brother Baker. What did you say that for? I didn't say it. The Word of God said it. Jesus said it. Malachi said it. Malachi, working through God, said it. Will a man rob God? Would you, rob, would you rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherewith have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. And it goes on to say that you're cursed. This whole land's cursed. Because you're robbing me. That's what you're doing when you don't bring the first part of whatever it is you get into the storehouse. I say now, <clears throat> if you make commitments to other people, you don't take that away from them and bring it to your church. That's stealing from the other guy. And God don't like that either. He has nothing to do with that. Let's get yourself straightened out first. You can survive with that one car. You don't have to have two or three cars. You can survive with that three bedroom house. You don't have to have a five bedroom house. There's a family Bible on the table Its pages torn and oh so hard to read And that family Bible on the table Will always be to me a memory 
At the end of day When all the work was over And the evening meal was on Dad would read to us from the family Bible And we'd count our many blessings one by one I can see us sitting round the table When from the family Bible Dad would read I can hear my mother softly sing of ages, rock of ages, fell for me. This old world of ours is full of trouble. This old world would also better be We had more Bible on the table And the mother singing rock of ages left for me I can see us sitting around the table Singing Rock of Ages, Rock of Ages, clap for me. Don't forget now, every single piece of music that you hear playing on this program when you're is yours absolutely 100% free. You'll never be bothered with any phone calls or, or begging letters from me. Now all you got to do is just write down my address, my email address, or even my phone number, and call me or write me and tell me, Brother Minkley, send me one of those albums. And I just want to thank you so much for joining us today and be here the next time as we get back into a portion of God's Word. God bless you. That is my prayer.